Hello, I'm Dr. Stephen Pipe, Professor of Pediatrics and Pathology from the University of Michigan. We're at a major inflection point in gene therapy becoming a reality as a treatment option for patients with hemophilia. The platform that has advanced the farthest uses adeno-associated virus vectors, or AAV, to replace either the factor eight or the factor nine gene into the liver through a single IV infusion. The clinical trials have produced levels of factor eight and factor nine that are sufficient to markedly reduce bleeding episodes, eliminate the need for factor eight or factor nine prophylaxis, and improve quality of life over up to five years of follow-up. Now, whereas the results so far may lead to regulatory approval, there's a number of remaining questions that can only be answered through long-term follow-up studies. Some of the questions that a long-term study can address include durability, whether the levels achieved can be sustained over many years, decades, or hopefully over a lifetime. Early data from the hemophilia A trials in particular have shown that factor eight levels have declined over time. Well, will this be true for everyone? How long will expression last? What proportion of patients will have to go back onto prophylaxis and after how many years? Second question relates to the reliability and variability of patient outcomes. Can we learn what determines the wide differences in expression that's observed? And can we identify predictors for who will have a good outcome or who will be a non-responder? And then thirdly, issues around safety. Now there's really two areas here within safety. Safety around the factor levels achieved and the potential adverse consequences of the AAV delivery procedure. Now we've had decades of experience with long-term factor replacement. Well, what can we expect from gene therapy over the long-term? If patients come off prophylaxis with levels that are not quite in the normal range, are there adverse consequences for that? Will patients be emboldened after gene therapy such that they engage in activities that may increase their risk for breakthrough bleeding? What levels of factor expression are protective across a wide range of activities? Now, with regard to the AV delivery procedure, we know that genetic elements delivered to the liver can insert into the chromosomes. Now, we've not seen adverse consequences from this in the clinical trials or most all of the long-term animal models. But what about a rare effect that can't yet be anticipated that might not be seen for years or decades? No clinical trial in a small number of patients over a handful of years will give us the data that we need to address this concern. Now, coming out of the clinical trials, the experience is still quite limited and short. It will also be a relatively small number of people that will be eligible to receive gene therapy even after regulatory approval. And this is where the long-term studies and global registry should be most useful. Because patients will be distributed globally, it's not easy for researchers and clinicians to see patterns and compare individual patient outcomes in a meaningful way. We need a global system that will collect long-term data that, just like I described above, and is capable of reporting out rare events that can be compared to the expected frequency of those events in this population. Now, the World Federation of Hemophilia Gene Therapy Registry has been initiated for just this purpose. I'm excited about this prospect because data from country gene therapy registries will be able to direct data to this global registry. And this will greatly enhance our ability to report out the important long-term outcomes on efficacy and safety. Hopefully it will be strong reassurance, but it's also designed to identify signals for adverse events that weren't identified in the early clinical trials, so-called known unknowns or even unknown unknowns. And this is such an important inflection point for the global hemophilia community. We have an obligation to provide a system of reporting that we can rely on over many decades of follow-up. Thank you very much.